Hello, friend. I, I would like to thank God once again for providing us an opportunity to be able to pray together. I hope I find you well. If you are still in pain, I would like you to know that we are really praying for you. And I would like to thank God for everyone around you who is providing you with care and loving kindness. And I also want to remember the medical practitioners who are also doing their part in order to do whatever they can to make sure that they restore you to good health. I don't know if you also have an idea that God is another arrangement that you can take advantage of. And um, this is something that we call anointing. It's, it's written there in the Bible. I will soon read it um, to you. But before I read that, I want you to know that um, you don't have to stop your medical treatment plan as it is provided by the hospitals and, and the clinics that are taking care of you. What anointing is simply doing is we are providing that extra bit which comes from God. And so I want you to take caution. When you opt for anointing, you don't have to stop anything that the doctors have prescribed to you. You can only stop until they have told you to stop that. But let me also admit that that as it may, when you get anointed sometimes, you know, the miracle will just override and you can actually go back to the doctors and they'll tell you something has happened to you and we don't know what. So without wasting time, let me read this um, promise that we get in the Bible from James chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. I'm reading from the New King James Version, and friend, I read in your hearing. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So there you are, friend. You are hearing for yourself. You can actually be anointed if you want to. And you can make arrangements with the leadership of your church. Um, you can even, if you need more information, you can also get in touch with, with some of us and we'll be able to, to provide the needed, the much needed information. But this is a provision that God has availed. You don't have to do it, but you can accept it by faith and leaving matters in God's hands. I, I want to quickly say the healing is not in the oil, but I want to tell you that there is power in what the oil is actually representing. It is representing the Holy Spirit. When you are anointed, we are surrendering you to the creative power of the Holy Spirit. And it is the Holy Spirit who then decide what happens. But the, the good thing that I like about anointing is that you tend to be healed physically, socially, and spiritually. It is holistic in nature. And also, I want you to also take the comfort of knowing that we do not command God when we are anointing you, but it is God who takes charge of what is happening. So he may actually decide he is going to cause a miracle to happen physically or psychologically. Whatever ailment you are facing, he can cause it to go away. But you also remember that there was a time when Paul uh, prayed three times. This is in Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to about 10. When Paul prayed and um, the Lord says, I'm not going to heal you, but my, my grace is sufficient for you. Uh, God has his own wisdom and intelligence in terms of uh, what he wants to do with our prayers. But there is something that causes me to celebrate my faith and my confidence in God. And that is when I have done what God requires me to do, my job is done. Then I leave matters into his own hands. This is why Paul, he who uh, suffered greatly and yet at the same time was able to, con to express confidence in God. Do you want to hear what he said? 
Let us go to Philippians chapter chapter 1 and verses 21. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. And this is what it says here. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, um, when you put matters in God's hands, leave it to God to decide what shall happen. That That's exactly uh, the question of faith, the element of faith. Don't do anointing with, when you have no faith. Don't do anointing when you are not surrendering yourself to God to decide exactly what he will do with, with your disease. And by the way, one of the reasons why people fear anointing, they think that anointing is an ordinance to prepare you for death. No, you can still be anointed and possibly not heal physically and still not die. Look, friend, um, I don't even know myself how many times I've been anointed. I, I have lost count. I have lost count. I believe in anointing with my whole life. You you can ask my wife, you can ask my family members and those that know me. Anointing has done a lot of good in my life. I've experienced miracles. But I also would like to say that there are times when I've been anointed and the the physical healing uh, did not come and that did not bother me because for me, when I have given a matter to God, um, I know God is working at it and he will do it at his own time. And if he decides like he's not going to heal me, he still remains a good God and I still love him because he knows exactly what he is doing. God has got good will towards us. He does not enjoy to see us suffer. No, he does not. If he's allowing it to happen, there's a greater good than our eyes can see. And this is why it is very important. And even having said that, I would like to say to your friend, when you get anointed, please expect a miracle to happen. Expect. Expect a miracle to happen. And live matters. Don't look at your disease. Look at the creator. The one who created your body is able to intervene for you. If you could resurrect the dead, what about a living person like yourself? You have faith in God. Thank you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, I'd like to pray for this friend of mine in their situation. May you help them, Lord, to believe and to trust in your ordinances, to trust in your arrangement, in your plans for our lives. And I pray, Lord, that a miracle may happen when they get anointed. May you give them the faith, Lord, to know you are still in control and their lives are very important to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.